Hello, I am back today with a Google Slides tip. I am going to talk today about um, using text boxes versus using tables to add text and why you might choose one over the other. Um, so I believe I've already gone over this, but just in case it's a refresher um, for you, in order to add a text box, it's super, super simple. All you do is either click right here, the text box button, and draw your text box and you can start typing. Um, you can also go to insert text box, does the same thing, you draw your text box and you type your words. Um, making a text box for students is super helpful when you're creating an activity so they already have a spot to type in. It's much easier for students to not have to add that on their own. If you're gonna send your students um, an activity, unless the activity is like a technology activity where they're creating their own activity or something, it's really best to just already have it there. So if you make a text box um, for your students to type in, you just draw it. My, I, and I highly recommend putting the word type here or X's or something like that so they can see where the text box is. You can format a text box. So if I click on text box and I click on format, I can add a border, so I can make a border any color I want um, here. And if I wanted it to be a thicker border, I can make the border thicker by again going to format, borders and lines, weight, and I can make it as thick as I want to, so students know to type there. So this is just a simple text box. Text box are fantastic, they work great. You can make them different sizes, so if I wanted a text box, um, up here that was smaller I can just adjust the size I can change um, where the text is so if I click on the text box and say I want the text to be in the middle I can do that if I want it to be centered I can do that I can make the text larger I can change the text to whatever I want to and I showed you where you can find extra um, fonts now there is a bit of a difference between text boxes and um, making a table um, making a table is really, is a, you could actually, okay. Making a table is really useful if you want things to line up a particular way. Um, and if you're having students answer like math problems or something like that, I think a table tends to work better because then they're not clicking through lots of different little boxes. Um, and I'll show you. You can even, and I've done this actually for recent resources, um, use a table for just a big writing space. So uh, let me show you a little bit um, with how you work with tables. Someone had asked a while ago, like a week or so ago, is it better to use a table over a text box? And I would say um, for most cases, it really doesn't matter. Both will work. Um, but a table is really helpful if you want things to line up a particular way, like particularly for math problems or maybe if they're like doing some kind of a mystery word. Um, thing where, which reminds me, mystery word, okay, sorry, I'm writing down the templates that I keep thinking of that I'm adding to the Google Slides templates. I'm just making more and more and more. If you have any ideas of things you want, let me know. I'm working on that this week. Okay, so here is, sorry about the tangent, here is how you make a table. So if you go to insert right here, go down to table, and you can just select the size of a table you want. I can keep going and going and going and going and going. I don't want a table that big though. So say I am working on um, math problems. I want them to solve some math problems. So a table would be really great for this. I'm gonna do, let's see, we'll do six math problems. I'm doing six by two and I'll show you why. So. I draw my table just like a text box. I can move this around, I can change it um, however I want to. If I pull this line down, I can make it so the bottom box is smaller, which is what I would like to do, sort of like that is good. I can make the borders bigger or I could take the borders away. Um, it depends on your preference. I'm going to make my borders darker. So I'm going to click on format borders and lines, border weight, and I'm just gonna make it four. I'm gonna change the oops, format border color because I want it to be black. Okay, so if I was going to have my students solve some math problems, um, 
tables are nice because they can keep things nice and lined up. Um, if I'm doing math problems, I recommend selecting them all and then uh, lining it to the right. Um, and I'm going to do addition problems. So I'm just going to type 8 plus 7 in the top. I'm going to select it, and I like to start with one, and then I can see the size I want. I'm going to make the font larger, and we're going to make it like way larger. Let's see. There you go, 72. Now, that automatically bumped it now that it's so big to the bottom of the slide, but if I want to make sure it's on the bottom of the, the not the slide, the bottom of the box, um, I can move it down. So say the font was a little smaller. I will have the font, if I put it to the bottom, it'll be on the bottom, which is nice because then it kind of looks like a flashcard. So let's see, we'll do some other addition sentences here. We're going to do 9 plus 3, um, 5 plus 5. And all I'm doing is, by the way, is I'm just typing like you would normally type, but I'm hitting after the first number, enter and then the plus sign and the zero, so that way it looks, you know, like an addition sentence. So three plus two, oops, and uh, four plus four. Okay, so the reason tables are nice is now when I send this to my students, they can just type their answers down here. Something that's important to do, if you notice, I didn't change the font, so this is teeny tiny. So what I wanna do is I'm going to make this it's aligned left right now. I'm going to align it right, and I'm just going to write an answer so I can see um, how it looks. I want one that's one space and one that's two spaces to make sure that I know they fit. So I'm going to make the font bigger. I think this was 60, so I made that 60 as well. I aligned it to the right. Okay, so perfect. Um, so when my students, now if I send this and I share this with them, which we have a video can't remember if I did a video on how to share it. Yes, I did. Yes, I'm fairly, so I'm pretty sure I did. Um, if I didn't, I'll add one. So now when I send this to my students, they can type in their answers here and it keeps things nice and lined up. I could do the same thing with text boxes. Um, I could do that. Let me make a new slide. So I could take that away. I won't, um, just very quickly, I'll just show you with one. I could do that with text boxes. I could insert a text box. I could draw it. I could write eight plus seven. Um, and then I would use hit control underline or control U for underline. I would align it to the right. Oh, I gotta select all of it. I'd align it all to the right and I would make it larger. So we'll do 60 again. Um, and then I could add another text box underneath. I would not recommend having your students write in that same text box because it's way too easy for them to delete it. Um, insert text box, and then they could type here. Um, and then, I, but in this case, I would have to put you know something so they know, or put a, a box around it so they know that they are. Um, supposed to write there. So you can use a text box for that. That's perfectly fine, but I just find it easier to use a table. Oh, another thing that's really cool. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and show you this too. So this is another thing. If you don't want your students to be able to mess with these, if you think they're going to edit them, you can actually do this. So you can leave that blank, obviously, and then you can save this as an image and reinsert it as a background and then add um, a table to the bottom so they can only mess with that. Let me show you that. So if I go to file and download and I'm going to download it, you can do a JPEG or a PNG. It doesn't matter. I prefer PNG. I just think it's a little clearer. So I'm going to download that. I'm going to drag that over to my desktop. I have way too many windows. <laughs> um, so I drag that to my desktop. You can't see that because I have two monitors, so it's on my other monitor. So I'm going to make a new slide. Um, this is a new slide. I'm going to get rid of that. Actually, I'm not gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna click on background. I'm gonna choose image from my, actually I'm gonna just drag it over. So I'm 
adding that back in. Okay, now I actually have both of these because this is, this was the, I had left that there because I hadn't gotten rid of it and I'll show you why. I'm going to highlight all of that and hit delete. And now, my friends, I have the perfectly sized spot for them to write their answers. They can't edit this, they can't do anything to this, they can write their answers down here, and they're good to go. So I hope that was helpful. I kind of went off on a couple tangents there. Um, but I hope that was helpful. That is why, that's a situation that I would recommend using a table. Again, it works well if you're doing like a mystery picture activity or like missing letters in a word because it gives students things like lined up nicely and it's harder for them to kind of mess it up, I guess. Um, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. And if there are any other Google Slide things, you're wondering like, can I do this in Google Slides? Can you please either comment here or make a new post of like, hey, I'd like to know this because I'm actually, I only have maybe one or two things that I had written down to share with you guys. And it's not that I don't know how to do anything else in Google Slides. It's just that I think some of this I'm so used to doing that I don't even think about needing to explain it. So if you have any questions, um, also, I am working on those Google Slide templates. Um, I don't even know how many I have now, but I have a bunch. I'm trying to get that done in the next few days. If you have anything you want, please comment and let me know as well. You can also send me a message um, because I want to make sure that I include everything that will be useful for you um, as you're going into this school year. So I hope that's helpful. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys tomorrow with another tip. Bye, friends.